Well, everybody, we're going to be talking about a very, very important subject to homebrew crew, something very dear and near to Tony's no, heart. No, not that. Yes. No, not that. Not it, is, that. it is time. Oh, please, not that. <sighs> today, we're going to talk about halflings. Layman's Guide to Halflings. Welcome to the Homebrew Crew. I'm Tony. This is Sean. And today we're going over my favorite subject ever. Halflings. Oh boy, aren't you so excited to talk about halflings? I cannot contain my excitement. I bet you can't. Uh, so today we are going to be talking about Layman's Guide to Halflings. And essentially this is a supplement that comes with 12 different subclasses that are based around halfling lore, culture, and things like that. And what I, I actually do like this. Um, yeah. I, you know, here's the thing. I love when you take a race and you actually expand on it. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be halflings justice, but it is still a really, really great uh, supplement with it because they actually put halflings into different types of houses, like yeah. different, uh, different clans of halflings. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Essentially, the way they divide it up is like there are different types of halflings and each one kind of does a different thing in their respective class. The nice thing is that each subclass is actually kind of doing things that we haven't really seen before or takes like a new spin on like something that we've seen before. So it's actually really, really interesting. And we're going to look at three of them out of here, three out of the 12. Yes. So there's plenty more for you guys to take a look at. Uh, but we're going to start with the Circle of the Recluse. And here we are down here in the corner. Isn't Hello. this great? Hi. Okay, so <laughs> the Circle of the Recluse. This is the druid subclass in this, and it's the druid that doesn't want to have to deal with anybody. He yeah. moves to the forest to be away from everybody else. Yeah, if, if you don't pick the hermit background, you're going to be <laughs> playing this class wrong. But no, it's a very cool druid circle. Uh, essentially, you're going to be focusing on kind of capitalizing on that difficult terrain feature. Mm -hmm. uh, even at that second level when you first get this, you're no longer affected by difficult terrain from any spells that you cast. Um, and it's really, really cool. And the nice thing is uh, any creature that enters that difficult terrain is actually going to take some damage equal to your wisdom modifier minimum of one. Kind of a neat thing to see somebody doing something with terrain. I know yeah. the, the, the rangers try... <laughs> uh, but this one actually does pretty well with it. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. You also get natural deterrence at 6th level, which is kind of an interesting thing. It, it's a very interesting feature because it kind of doesn't really go along with the other features, but it's still really neat. Essentially, you command this tiny beast or plant. Mm -hmm. You're kind of casting a command spell on it to basically do your bidding as best as it can, <laughs> but you're kind of implanting a spell on that creature and it's going to go and do whatever you say as best it can and then it just kind of triggers a spell. Right. Uh, the one thing I do say that this kind of works with is if you think of this as a theme of a druid that wants to keep everybody away, yeah, it's just kind of like, okay, hey, little spider, go on over there right. and cast fireballs. Yeah, like, you know, like I don't, I don't necessarily <laughs> want, you know, people near me. This right. is the six foot away quarantine druid. Right. Yeah, this, this druid will do very well during our time. So That's congratulations. Right. Now you do get Thicket Sower as well, and this is kind of an interesting one too, because this is all about hindering enemies and all that too. It's Actually, more with the terrain. really, really like this one. So you get to make this 10 foot cube within a 30 foot radius, and you can kind of make this difficult terrain, but it acts as half cover for you and your buddies. Um, and it actually gets bigger as you level up, and you can use it as uh, many times equal to your wisdom modifier. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat. And then the last one here is Master of the Hidden Nest. Now I, I really <laughs> like this one. Yeah, essentially this is kind of encapsulating on your skill on difficult <laughs> terrain. So whenever you're in difficult terrain, either from that thicket from earlier or from a spell that you cast, <laughs> you're invisible, gain immunity to being restrained and being knocked prone, your movement speed increases by 10, and you gain a climb speed. This literally to me is the druid hiding in the bushes. Yeah. This is like, yeah. oh, you can't see me. Go away. <laughs> no, just go away. You know, like that right. kind of thing. Um, you know, and as far as halflings go, it's not that bad. Of course. And, and the one thing I do like about this subclass, it's a very nice defensive option if you want to play the druid. It is. Because true. that difficult terrain is going to slow down your enemies. It's going to deal a little bit of damage, but it's also going to possibly protect you and your friends from taking hits. So it's actually a really nice defensive subclass. And let's admire the artwork here. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, it the druid it really the speaks for itself. You know, the coffee mug. Yeah. I work with somebody. It looked just like <laughs> Probably. That. We all probably do. So. Now, we're going to just kind of scroll down and go into our next one here, too. And this, this is the epitome of the reason why I have a problem right. with halflings. Exactly. This is the way of the rabbit's foot 
monistic tradition. Yeah. This is the monk. And it, of course, it wasn't bad enough that we made a video about how to kill a monk, which you can actually view on the channel. Uh, but it's going to combine the uh, peskiness of a monk plus that lucky feature of a halfling and mm -hmm. kind of turn up the dial to 10. Uh, even at that third level, when you first get this class, uh, whenever you or a friendly creature within 20, uh, 30 feet rolls a d20, can spend a reaction and three key points to roll Great. a second die. Great, so it's spreading. <laughs> yeah. So the luck the luck feature that they get is just spreading to anybody that they want. Right, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So no need to get that lucky feed. That's fine. <laughs> they lose those key points. That means less fear, uh, yeah. flurry of blows for me. There you That's go. That's fine with that. <laughs> um, but you also get Wheel Keeper at sixth level here, and this is manipulating the good and the bad with things, which is kind of neat. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting feature. So whenever you actually crit, instead of doing that extra damage, you can actually gain a key point. Simple. Fair. Yeah, I actually think that one's pretty fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as as far as key points go and getting them back and right. resting and this that whatever, not bad. Um, and then the order of the luck thief though, this is kind of cool just because of the radius that it does. Right. So and basically, you're so good at manipulating luck now mm -hmm. that you're you're able to either negate blessings in your or area, meaning you nobody in that thirty foot range has advantage. Right. Or you could ward uh, against misfortune where. They can't get disadvantage. Yeah, and it's actually a really important note. It says creatures, not allies or enemies. Right. So you kind of have to be careful when you're projecting this aura. <laughs> Remember that if you try to decide that like no one with around your area can have advantage, your buddies are not going to be able to have advantage either. But I like this because it's balanced in that regard. Right. And it's a cool feature too. It's like not nothing too crazy. You still have to spend key points to actually do it. And there's a nice balance involved. Now, if you really want to skip, spend key points, <laughs> yeah, this, this last this ability is, is for you. This, this is nuts. So for 10 key points, you can Calamity Breach. Yeah, so essentially when you spend the 10 key points, whenever a creature you see makes an attack, skill check, or saving throw, when you use this feature, you can change that outcome of the roll to a 1. And you use your reaction to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like a like that. Yeah. And there's not really any sort of thing on that that limits to how many times no. you can do it. It's just if you have the key points, you can do it. Yeah, the one thing I do like about this uh, subclass for the monk is that the key point spending on this is actually pretty balanced. <laughs> even when you first get that Kismet feature, it costs three points. And even when you get to Calamity Reach, it's gonna cost you 10 points. So right. a lot of the features are good, but they can be get, uh, very expensive as you use them. Yeah, I think anytime somebody makes a subclass or what have you, they have to look at the availability of whatever uh, mechanic that class has, yes right yeah and this is a great example of how to spend those key points and how to get them back on things like gaining that key point back uh when you when you do that you crit, crit yeah is is something that you don't normally see with any monks and it's actually really good and beneficial yeah I like that yeah so again really cool one there um and again kind of taking an example of taking like one feature of that race and kind of making it the focus of that subclass now, this last one that we're going to look at here is kind of the David and Goliath kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, very um, much so. I've noticed in my years of, of DMing, you don't necessarily get somebody who uses a sling. It's they not, exist, but you don't use them. It's not a very typical weapon. I mean, the range is so-so. There's a D4. You have to supply ammunition for it. And I've never had a player that uses a sling. Nope. Everyone but, uses bows and arrows for some reason. Yeah, Slings. but maybe after this, change your mind. This is the Herd Keeper Conclave, and this is a ranger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it kind of talks about how this ranger is kind of keeping a bit of a herd, and you kind of treat your party like a herd when you're playing this ranger archetype. So not only are you going to be good with slings, but you're also going to be there to kind of watch out for the party, help them, guide them, do whatever you can. Now, you start off here with crack shot, which you now have that... Uh, you know, sling with you and what have yeah. you. But now you can hold a shield and you can load the sling while while holding the shield. Yeah. In addition to that, you can use the sling as a melee weapon, meaning you can go up to somebody and whop them with that. Thing. And not to mention, now you can double the range on that sling. So it right there, it actually makes the sling very useful because again, typically with the range weapon, we don't usually see like a shield bearer mm -hmm. with the range weapon. This is actually really nice because at least it gives you the option. And again, it's helping someone use the sling, which is great. <laughs> right. I, I kind of would have liked to have seen a damage increase with that. For sure, yeah. Uh, just because the D4, you know, how many people go up and fight with daggers or something? You know, yeah, something, something. yeah. So. Um, but it does get better as you're getting further on. Now, Seeking Stones is the next thing you get at third level. You do get two abilities at third level. Yeah, so actually, as a bonus action, you can actually turn three pieces of ammunition into magical projectiles. Uh, they essentially do become magical attacks. 
each dealing 1d6 bludgeoning and a bonus damage of your wisdom modifier. As you get higher in level, this can actually get to 2d6, and then you can even choose fire, cold, lightning, or force damage on top of that. So again, kind of adding that extra feature onto the sling damage. And there it goes, but I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, that's a magic missile, isn't it? No, you still have a chance to miss with it. Of you're course. just enchanting the ammunition. Yeah. You get that 1d6, and it's neat to be able to apply the different types of damage to it. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure how you make a, a rock lightning, but... <laughs> We're just going to go with it. Why yeah, not? It's a why weather not? rock. Why not? <laughs> um, then seventh level, you get shepherd's eyes. Now, yeah. this is the herd thing you were talking about. Yeah. So essentially, uh, whenever you go into a round of combat and if you were going to be surprised, you actually choose a certain number of your party to kind of not be surprised with you equal to your wisdom modifier. So kind of like, you know, when you're in a herd of zebra or a herd of sheep. <laughs> right. And they can't find you in, the, yeah. in that whole mix, right? And it's kind of interesting because, you know, a lot of DMs may not even use utilize the surprise feature in combat, mm -hmm. but it's actually a pretty major thing. When your party is surprised, they spend that first round not being able to do a single thing, and the enemies can I'll easily take advantage. I'll tell you, having uh, going up against a group of assassins, oh, the assassin nasty. NPCs in the back, those nasty. things are... Those things are horrible because they get that, you know, surprise round. And if you're surprised by yeah, them... Yeah, they're going to deal that extra damage. That's massive it's amounts gross. of damage. It's gross. It totally is. <laughs> And then you can concuss. Yeah. So Let's concuss. <laughs> so at 11th level, uh, you basically get this feature where you can take a minus five penalty to your attack roll, but if it hits, the target has to make a con save. If they fail, they get stunned until the next turn. So it's kind of like taking a, uh, what is that, the, the great weapon master? Yeah, or even like thing. sharpshooter where you're kind of subtracting from that initial attack roll. But I like the fact of uh, them being stunned. You know, yeah. and you can do this one of two ways too, DMs. It could be, wow, you hit him in a very vital organ, or it could be, did I just get hit by a rock? <laughs> kind of thing. Did someone just use a sling? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> it's just as surprising. Yeah, right? of course, yes. And of course, you can target between the eyes. At 15th level, you very get that fitting. ability. And this one is kind of neat. You basically get the chance to, if you make the attack, you can say, that was a natural 20. Yep, and that's it. Uh, of course, you can only do it once per long rest. Don't worry. It's not the the halflings haven't taken right. over completely yet. But in case you forgot you were playing a halfling, this last 15th <laughs> ability is a great reminder. Uh, again, nothing too crazy. It's basically a free critical um, and you can use it per long rest. So. Right. Now, I really saying that I don't care for halflings is one thing, mm -hmm. but I really do like the style of this whole thing. It's It's got great artwork in it. Uh, some great classes in there. In fact, there's like a hedge wizard. There's ones that I wanted to bring up yeah. that Sean wouldn't let me bring up, uh, <laughs> but they are really, really cool. And this is definitely something to go ahead and check out there. Again, this is A Layman's Guide to Halflings by Justice Mercer. You can find this on DM's Guild. Um, I don't remember the price of it, but it is very affordable and very, very awesome. Yeah, and that's a lot coming from Tony himself. But yeah, I really do like this one as well. There's a lot of heart that they put into the supplement. The artwork is really nice. And a lot of the subclasses that you will find here are very well balanced and very wealthy. So uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of our Patreons out there who are still supporting us through all of this COVID stuff. Yes, and we all appreciate these it. We really appreciate you guys. And thanks to our new Patreon, Ron Zolman. Very nice of you to join us. Thank you so much, Ron, and uh, welcome to the Homebrew Crew. And of course, if you do want to make sure that you're caught up with all of our videos, be sure to hit subscribe down there and hit the bell. You're going to get a notification as soon as you get a new video up. That's right. And remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed and not always include halflings, but this one's okay. So <laughs> until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.